Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ben and at the beginning of this year, I started working full time as a structural engineer. Throughout this year, I've learned a lot of things and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing eight of the life lessons I've learned in my first year of work. There's lots to get through, so let's get started. All right, so lesson number one is that learning doesn't stop at university. For many of us, university is seen as the final chapter of our educational journey. And while this may be true when it comes to receiving any formal education, learning itself is something that you need to make sure that you're always doing. For me, this year, like the last four I spent at university, still involved a countless number of hours reading textbooks, watching tutorial videos, and making my own notes. And this is because at university, you only really scrape the surface of what you need to know to be a competent engineer. And during my work this year, I really started to see how many gaps in my knowledge there were and where I needed to focus my attention if I wanted to improve. At university, simply passing your courses and moving on to the next ones is enough to make sure that you're always learning. But when you enter the workforce and this set curriculum is removed, it's up to you to discover what you don't understand and find the resources to figure it out. Which takes me to my next point, which is you control how much you learn. Okay, so unlike university, where you can track your improvement throughout the semester by checking your results from assignments or exams, at work, how much progression you want to make is completely up to you. Let me explain. For example, say there's a senior engineer asking you to do a task that you've never done before, and they give you an Excel spreadsheet which is going to help you to complete the task. There's two ways you can go about doing this task. The first way is the easy way, which would just be plugging in the exact numbers that you've got into the Excel spreadsheet trusting the result and leaving it at that. And then the second way, which would be the harder way about completing this task would be going through that spreadsheet and breaking it down so that you completely understand and agree with everything that's going on and then using it to complete the task. Now, obviously taking the time to read through their calculations and get familiar with everything they've done is gonna take way longer than just plugging in the numbers and trusting the result. But if you're interested in developing your own skill and being able to complete this task independently, then sacrificing some of your own time to go through this is gonna pay off in the long run. And this takes me to my third point, which is invest in yourself. All right, so what I've come to realize this year is that everything I'm learning and spending a lot of effort to document neatly isn't just to complete an assignment or a project, but it's to develop skills that I can take with me no matter where I go. And this mindset shift from assessment-based learning to skill-based learning is honestly one of the biggest personal changes I've made this year as this released me from feeling overworked or stressed as I know that all this effort and extra time I'm putting in is to create resources that will benefit me for my entire career. All right, and lesson number four is that balance brings happiness. As a university student, your daily schedule can be very flexible. And with that comes the ability to fill up your time with a bunch of other things like part-time work, hobbies, or even just relaxing. But when you begin full-time work, your schedule fills up really fast and you can feel like you have no time for yourself. Throughout the year, I definitely felt that I lost my work-life balance at times. And while getting this balance right is different for everyone, here are three quick tips that helped me. Number one is to set boundaries. So this means that you should schedule time for things that are important to you, whether that be exercise, hobbies, or spending time with your family. Number two is practice self-care. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, eating well, and finding a way to relax and de-stress at the end of the day. And number three is say no. For example, if you're already super busy at work and people are trying to give you more work to do, you do need to speak up and say that you don't have any more capacity. People will understand, but you need to speak up. I know this can be hard when you're a junior staff member, but you do need to say something because you can't be expected to do everything, and it's all right to say no. Okay, and lesson number five is that it's up to you to drive your career in the direction you want it to go. And what I mean by this is that if you want to get experience or exposure in a certain area, you can't just sit back and wait for it to happen. You need to proactively ask and look around for opportunities. In the workforce world, no one's going to be keeping tabs on you and making sure that you're competent in each area of your job. So if you want to improve your skills on something, it's up to you to identify what that skill is and then go to your manager and ask to be put on a project where you will get that experience. Likewise, after a bit of time in your first job, you might begin to realize that a skill that you really want to develop isn't ever going to be able to in your current role because the company that you work for doesn't do that type of work or for a number of other reasons. However, knowing that you have the power to move companies so that you become a well-rounded and proficient engineer is something that you should always keep in mind because those first five years out of university, I think are really, really important and you don't wanna waste that time hoping that things will change. All right, and lesson number six is be accountable. 
Even as a graduate engineer, you'll be given tasks that you're solely responsible for completing. And what I've learned is that taking on full ownership and responsibility of these tasks is the best way to get through them. For example, you should speak up if there's anything you don't understand in any of the meetings or about the task itself. You should reach out to seniors for advice and help throughout completing the task. And lastly, you should definitely speak up if you see anything that looks weird or wrong. In history, there's been quite a few times where young engineers have picked up on major flaws, so don't be afraid to say something. Being out of your depth and fully engrossing yourself in a task is one of the best ways to learn, so don't worry about looking stupid or silly as you're trying to figure things out. Alright, and lesson number seven is to establish expectations. As a student, whenever you're given an assignment or an exam, there are a clear set of objectives. For example, in an assignment, you're given a task sheet and a marking sheet, and for a test, there are a clear set amount of questions you need to complete. However, when you're a working engineer, those objectives are a lot more ambiguous if you don't say anything. And what I've learned is that there are two main things you want to clarify before beginning any task. The first thing is, what are the deliverables? Is it a sketch, a calculation pack, a model, or even just an Excel spreadsheet? And the second thing is, how many hours are there available for me to do this? As structural engineers, we often work to strict budgets, so it's important to know how many hours you can put into something so you don't blow the budget and you know how much effort to put in. All right, and the final lesson I learned this year is the importance of staying organized. As a full-time engineer, you often work on multiple projects at once, so being able to prioritize tasks and manage your time effectively is crucial for meeting deadlines. Now, there are so many different ways you could go about keeping yourself organized, and that could honestly be a complete video in itself, but a few things you definitely want to keep a close eye on and manage carefully are your emails, your to-do lists, and your documents. In my opinion, spending the time to organize yourself and clearly lay out everything you want to get done can sometimes be just as productive as completing the task itself. So if you are feeling overwhelmed by how much you need to get done, I would recommend just taking a step back and focusing on tidying up the information in front of you before getting on with the next task. All right, so there you have it. That was eight of the most valuable lessons I learned in my first year as a graduate structural engineer. And if you liked this video, you might also be interested in learning what I learned in my first six months where I cover more technical things. So you should check out this video here. And if you want to find out what the 10 tips I'd give myself if I was going to be starting my engineering degree all over again, then you should check out this video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.